Hello, I'm Kim Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this episode we're joined by sheep farmer Tomas O'Leary. Tomas is farmer just outside Killarney in County Kerry. He's also a participant in the Chocolate Spider Farm Sheep Program. We catch up with Tomas towards the tail end of Lamon, who describes the system for artificially rearing surplus lambs. Tomas, uh, maybe just for the benefit of our listeners and to kick us off, you'll give a little bit of background of where you're farming and what kind of system you're on. Uh, so I'm farming outside uh, Killarney, County Kerry, uh, two farms. Uh, they're on either side of the town, so they're about 16 miles apart. Um, I have 300 uh, built uh, there across uh, yours, and I also have a contract rearing uh, heifers as well. Tomas, I know from working with you over the last number of years with the Better Farm Programme, you're running quite a prolific flock, and it's something that's kind of timely at the moment. Because you're running a high up of flock, you're scanning around 2.2 most years, you have a lot of multiples. How do you go about managing the multiples? I know there are often lambs you have on the farm. Um, yeah, so um, originally I suppose I would have tried uh, rearing the, the tree lambs on the, the yo, but I never found that successful. Uh, so what I do is I take one lamb off the yo and rear that lamb artificially. Okay, so you're not putting any to the field with three, and obviously look, any order off a lamb, I assume goes on to the same system. Maybe we'll just go through that for a minute. How do you pick the lamb you take off? Um, I suppose it's a simple enough system. I try and leave two even lambs with the yo. So if if there's one very small lamb or one very big lamb, they're, they're the one I would, I would take. Or, you know, if there were three even lambs, I'd possibly, maybe if there was two yo lambs, I'd leave them with the, the yo and take away the ram. Um, you know, that's okay. the, the basics of it, really. No, it's straight fair enough. But here's a question that comes up. Just the CC you're running, look, 300 euros, you're going to have a lot of orphans in that case. Maybe just take us through the system, because it can be quite costly artificially, rare, but you, you have a fairly streamlined system for doing it. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, it's a simple system, really. Um, I just convert the uh, one of the, the sheds uh for the the lambing period really just uh i divided it up into three pins um so what i do is the the young lamb when he's taken off the mother uh i'd always leave them for 24 hours with the mother in the hope that they'd get uh you know beef things from the the mother you know for to to help them um for, so for immunity I, and yeah, yeah for for immunity um at 24 hours I would take them from. I wouldn't leave them any longer than that because it's it's, it's harder to to train them to the the your two feeder uh, if you leave them any longer than that. So I bring them over into the shed, put them into the first pen, uh, watch them you know tightly for the first couple of days uh, to make sure they are sucking. Often you'd have to uh, you know give them a bottle maybe for a day or two just to to get him used to that and then uh, move him over onto the, the teeth so of the, the O2 feeder. Yeah, it's the, it's the O2 feeder you're using. So that's that's your training pin, basically, that first pen. That's right. And that's the thermostat in that would be turned up to the, the very the very top. So, the, the you know, kind of the hotter you can have the milk for them to train them, the better. They won't so really, if the, if the milk is too cool or too cold starting off, they won't really suck it. So that's your first batch. Obviously, you've lambs trained on the feed as well. Do you find that useful to bring the others onto it? Yeah, like the the first two or three on to is starting out at the hardest because they don't really know what's happening. Whereas once you have a few lambs there and bring in a few more, they're following the others and the others will really train them onto it. Uh, so really, it's once you get going, it's very easy. It's just the first few is, is, is the, the hardest. So, that, um, so that's your first pen. How long did it spend there before you transition? I suppose it depends really, but roughly about a week. Uh, what I would see is, you know, you'd see the lamb after a week. He's visibly thriving. He's pretty on weight and there's a, a shine in him. That's what I'm looking for before you move him out of that first pen. Okay, so you know, the, the second pen you've set up then, what's different about it? Yeah, I suppose maybe I'm a bit different now to other farms than what I, farmers and what I do and that, but... I think that second pin is the most important of the three, really, in that you have the, the lamb, he's a week old, 
rather than putting him in straight in with probably bigger lambs, you know, as the more and more pets uh, are there. Whereas, you know, if you put him into that second pin, he has a chance. The the milk is reduced down. Uh, the the heat is. So you're still you're half. still using the O2 feeder. Yeah, so I have two of those. So one in the first pin and one in the second pin. But the thermostat is turned down to half, and I think he's not under any extra stress or any you know going into that second pin. The milk is a bit cooler, so it's a small bit of a change, but he gets used to that, and he's still with lands more or less his the, his own age. Uh, before he goes into the, the third pin. Okay, so the second pin is essentially the same. It's still at the milk, just at a reduced temperature to a slightly limit intake possibly. And yeah. it's the fact that he's with an even bunch is key, you think, for that pin? I think so. It's not putting him under any extra pressure. Uh, the pin is still quite small in that, you know, in the third pin, it's a bigger pin. So, you know, they've <laughs> more freedom to to run around so, and roam. So how long are they in pin two before the transition to yeah, the third pin? They're about, another week, about a week. Okay. So they're fully trained onto the, the cooler milk. They're happy and, you know, they're, they're you know, you know their content. And at that stage, then you can move them on into the, the, into the, the third pin. So know, the, what, pin. what does the third pin consist of? So it's maybe three times the, the size of the, the other pins. Uh, there's a creep feeder inside there. Um, I use pelleted, a small pelleted creep to start them off on. Okay. Uh, there's water and there's uh, a barrel, just an ordinary uh, blue barrel cut in half, uh, no thermostat uh, with uh, tubes and uh, uh, nipple connected to that. Or so so they're, they're, on, they're on fully cold milk at that stage? It's fully cold. Okay, um, so your lamb is at minimum two weeks old going into that, more than likely three weeks in some cases yeah, going in. Yeah, 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 it would be up from two and a half to three weeks, I suppose, yeah. And in terms of intake of milk, it is limited slightly because it's cooler milk at that stage, you're trying to get the meat and creep. Yeah, so like what I would do is a kind of, on a daily basis, you'd be counting the lambs in the, the third pin and you'd be mixing the milk according to the number of lambs, so they get 400 grams per lamb. Uh, to about two and a half litres of water. So I mix that up in the morning and that does them for the 24 hours. And, so, you know, that's about what they'll consume in the, in the day. So like, that is one of the big costs of that system, the cost that the milk replacer and how long you feed it for. You've quite a strict approach for winging them lambs off it and actually limiting the intake of milk replacer. Maybe you'll just take us through that. Yeah, so uh, at day 35, no lamb really goes beyond day 35. Some, maybe a few, would be even weaned earlier than that. They're abruptly weaned. So I have, um, I know their dates of birth because they're tagged at birth and I've recorded it. So I have a scanner and I'll just, as in the morning, I go around the pin scanning the ears. And if I see a lamb at 35 days, he's out into the fourth pin across the yard into where the, you know, abruptly weaned. Um, I find it's the best system. Um, I don't have any problem with bloat or anything like that. And uh, once they're out of that pin, then they're just on creep uh, mm-hmm. on a straw bed. Um, and they're they're picking away at the straw, uh, you know, as well, and just okay. on the creep. So I uh, so we'll just maybe to take us through the four, I'll, I'll ask about the management afterwards in a moment, but to take us through the first three pins again, the training pin, you're about a week in it until lambs, you're happy with sucking. You transition the second pin, slightly cooler milk, Again, the key to that is the with lambs an even size. And at the third pen, your focus really there is, co- is cold milk out of an ordinary barrel with tubes. Your focus there is to get the meat and creep, to get them transitioned off milk. So that's right, yeah. that, that sets you up for weaning on day 35. What do you do with them once you have them lambs weaned? So you, you mentioned going to another shed. What's yeah, in well, it? Yeah, so they're, they go into a pin where yours would have been over the winter. Uh, they're, in, they're put into that pin. There's a creep feeder inside in the middle. Um, with water, straws put in, bedded every day. What I find is they, they start eating creep, a good bit of creep at that stage, and they also start picking at the straw, and they'll eat a nice bit of straw as well, um, you know, as well as for, for bedding them. So they're there at that stage, then they're there for maybe three more weeks, probably to the, the end of April, start of May. Uh, they're all kind of weaned at that stage, and um, they'll go out then into, out into the field at that stage then. Okay, and so when the, after turnout, um, I'm assuming you'll even creep with them. Uh, yes, but uh, it would be it it wouldn't be at lib; it would be restricted. Um, they go out with the 
the old lambs and their lambs. So those lambs would have access to creep as well. So uh, they're um, they're with them then at that stage. Um, okay. They're left with them until they're weaned from their from their mothers, and then they're they're introduced with uh, the other lambs into that stage, all off of creep at that stage. So they basically just become part of the main flock once of them reared. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. To ask you maybe one aspect of that, I might put you back on. Often, times people will talk to questions. There's a lot of labour in rearing pet lambs. Obviously, you've outlined your system and you have a good setup. It reduces some of that. Aside from training the lambs on in the first pen, which generally happens in the middle of lambing when you're going to be there anyway, in terms of labour at the moment, I know you're at the end of lambing at the moment. How much time do you fill the feeders once a day? How much time do you spend that? Uh, so it's in the morning. Um, so I'd imagine um, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour. Would you... Just to to rinse out the 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 barrel, clean the, just clean the tubes. You know it's quite quick. Um, I have the water inside in the the shed. I have a, a little gas heater for heating it. Um, so I'd say twenty minutes would would do okay. the whole lot. Bed okay. bed them and everything like so. It's, and, it's quite fast. And the key again is having the setup on. You you mentioned there as well having a hot water source. It's another key way of cutting yeah. out some of the time. But definitely, like if you were to be drawing from a house now across the yard or whatever, that would be adding a good bit of time. So, uh, Tomás, I think that's been a very good synopsis of your system and how to read them. Certainly, I think it'll put a few ideas there for people. Thanks very much for taking the time to join us. All right, Kieran, no bother. Okay, we're going to wrap the episode up at this point. Again, I think Tomás outlined some very useful tips on how he manages artificially reared lambs. I would like to thank him for taking the time out to join us and sharing his insights on how he runs the system. Look, a couple of key points in it. Having the setup right is key. Tomás is, is very simple but very effective. Transitioning lambs at different stages onto cola milk and gradually getting them consuming more meal and weaning them off at a target age is key. So batching according to size and having a number of different pens if you're carrying a lot of these lambs is essential to keep the cost down. We're going to include a short video clip we'll post it on the website in the coming days and include the link in the description that'll give you a bit of a better idea of what the system looks like. Again, for any updates on the sheep programme, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chaga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Ovicast. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to future episodes.